Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the New York Knicks. They're right now in the midst of an eight-game win streak, the best in the NBA at the moment, and playing some really good ball. Their big three are all thriving. They seem to really be finding a rhythm amongst each other. The young guys are stepping up in a big way. Role players, everybody, Tom Thibodeau even, who I've been pretty critical of, has done a great job of coaching and changing things up to help them find more success after a pretty disappointing start to the year. So in this video, we're going to go over what has made them so successful. Successful, but more importantly, is it sustainable and are the Knicks truly back? Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we talk about what's happening this year, I want to quickly flash back to what happened to them in 2021. That year, they had a monster breakout season. They were led by Julius Randle, who became an all-NBA player after bouncing around a couple teams prior to landing in New York. And it seemed like he found a home as a franchise cornerstone that they could build around for the foreseeable future. And they would end up giving him a pretty sizable contract that following offseason. They also got great play from RJ Barrett, who seemed to be taking some strides in his young career. Young role players, a guy like Emmanuel quickly stepped up and immediately made an impact. And all of a sudden, it felt like New York had a super bright future after kind of being in the mud over the previous few seasons. They would end up bowing out in the playoffs to the Atlanta Hawks pretty quickly due to a lack of really a versatile offense. It was kind of one dimensional and reliant on Julius Randle. But in the offseason, they tried to address some of these issues. They ended up bringing in guys like a Kemba Walker and an Evan Fournier. And looking back, that was a big mistake. But at the time, I did like the idea of trying to diversify the offense. However, they should have just stuck with the young guys, let them continue to grow and develop as a young team rather than trying to all of a sudden go all in on a team that just wasn't really at all close to being a contender, despite being a pretty solid playoff team. And so last year was super disappointing. They really fell far below below expectations for themselves. And now starting this year, they were 10 and 13. Tom Thibodeau maybe seemed to be on the hot seat. There was a lot of questions about the rotation. I saw the Knicks play the Thunder at Madison Square Garden a few weeks ago, and Knicks fans were losing their minds as the Thunder dropped 150 points on them. Leaving Madison Square Garden, they were screaming, fire Thibodeau, bench RJ Barrett, you know, trade everybody. It was seeming really bad in New York. However, with this eight game win streak, they've completely turned things around and it comes down to two different things, the play of their big three and the defense. Let's go ahead and start off with the big three. And I know a lot of y'all in the comments are going to say, oh, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, Jalen Brunson isn't a big three. Probably not in the traditional sense, but it's easy for me to say that and you know who I'm talking about. So we're going to continue to use that term. So the big three consisting of those guys, they started off really rough. Jalen Brunson has been great all season. He's looked like one of the best free agent acquisitions. A lot of people said that he was really overpaid by New York, but in a new role as the lead ball handler for the first time, kind of out of the shadow of Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson's been phenomenal so far this year, playing solid defense. He's a mid-range assassin, some of the best footwork in the league as a guard. He's been super fun to watch, a facilitator that the Knicks have desperately been looking for. And so he's been great all season. This turnaround, has nothing to do with him because he's been consistently solid. Really, R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle are the ones that have turned things around. I made a whole video talking about how R.J. Barrett was a problem on the Knicks because they gave him a ton of money, and if he didn't turn things around and become a potential franchise piece, it was going to look like a massive mistake. At the time of the video, R.J. was shooting like 40% from the field, from three. It seemed like he couldn't buy a bucket. He wasn't finishing layups, and it was starting to seem like, wow, that contract might have been a mistake. But later on, now through this eight-game win streak, he's turned things around in a big way averaging 21.8 points per game, six rebounds and 2.5 assists over this stretch. Those are great numbers. And efficiency wise, he's shooting about 45% from the field and 36% from deep, much better than what he had to begin the season. You would still like to see those numbers climb a bit, but for now they're much better. And as long as you keep seeing improvement, it goes a long way for RJ Barrett. Then we have Julius Randle, who right now is probably going through his best stretch of games that we've seen since that all NBA season. Over the eight game win streak, he's averaging 25.3 points per game, 11.5 rebounds and 4 4.1 assists, just monster numbers. He's looking like an all-star caliber player again. He's playing better defense, and as they continue to win, the body language is better, the effort is more there. You still want to see that even when they're losing, but at least now that things have turned around, he is starting to show some of those traits of a leader that they expect him to be. And the play of these three guys, Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, and Julius Randle, are what the Knicks were hoping would kind of carry them heading into the season, as well as play of some other role players and young guys, which we'll get into in a second. But these guys are the core of their success. And now that they're playing at a high level, the offense looks a lot more dynamic than it did back in that 2021 season. Having a guy like Jalen Brunson who can orchestrate the offense, Julius Randle, is still kind of a similar player, if not a bit worse. But now that you have some help for him, it doesn't really matter. And RJ Barrett, if he continues to score efficiently, gives them another option as well. But the biggest factor that's determined their success is the defense. A few years ago, like I said, that's 
that's what they hung their hat on. And to begin this year and even last season, we watched this team and it was like, how is this the same franchise, the same coach, and a lot of the same core that was playing that high level defense a few years ago? What happened? When did they stop caring? The effort wasn't there. The fundamentals, the technique, it felt like everything was completely off. But now they figured things out. Out of this eight game win streak, six of their wins have come by double digits. And five of those eight games, they've held their opponents to less than 100 points. That's incredible in today's NBA where this season more than ever, offenses are continuing to spike. Holding a team to less than 100, especially when you play some pretty good squads over that stretch, is really, really impressive coming from the Knicks. It just showcases how good their defense has been. Last night in a win over the Golden State Warriors, they forced 19 turnovers. They're getting in the passing lanes. They're disrupting guys. They're contesting shots. And it feels like the effort is 100% better than it was at the beginning of the year. And even last season, it's completely night and day. And it is partially due to the play of the guys we already mentioned. Julius Randle has looked a lot better guarding in isolation than he did over the past year and a half. They're trusting him a lot more in that scenario, and he's starting to hold his own. RJ Barrett has always been a pretty solid defender. He's doing a good job as well. Jalen Brunson does pretty good for his size, but it's outside of those guys that really is the key. And in particular, Tom Thibodeau has made a big decision, and one that I give him a lot of credit for because it's not one we've seen him make a lot in the past. He's benched some of the vets. Derrick Rose isn't playing anymore. Evan Fournier isn't ever really touching the court. Instead, he's gone in favor of some of these young guys that are actually giving hustle and seem like they're playing inspired basketball. In particular, Quentin Grimes and Deuce McBride have been phenomenal. Quentin Grimes is someone that I have been a truther of for so long. I watched him live in the Summer League and I was like, he is going to be a guy for them this season. I made a video talking about breakout players in the NBA before the year and Quentin Grimes is one of the people I had on that list, especially because I thought if the Knicks make a Donovan Mitchell trade, which at the moment it seemed like they would 100% do, I thought Quentin Grimes being in that trade to the Jazz could really thrive in a new role as one of the focal points of the offense. But the trade didn't end up happening and Quentin Grimes kind of got buried on the bench to begin the year. But now he's been getting some starter minutes. He had 20 points the other night. He's playing amazing defense as well. And he's been a huge contributor as a wing player. I was advocating for so long for him to start and Tom Thibodeau has decided, hey, he's going to give us the best chance to win. We're not paying him the most. He's not really the most veteran guy, but he is going to help us win this game. He is going to hustle, give effort and lock down on defense, which is exactly what we need. And he's done exactly that. So shout out to Quentin Grimes. And then Deuce McBride, who is another guy that got buried on the bench and he was one of their last guys in the rotation but now he's getting consistent backup guard minutes playing some great defense once again hustling and the play of these young players has been super critical over this eight game win streak their rotation has been one of the youngest in the NBA I believe the average age of their rotation throughout this stretch has been like 23 and a half years or right around that mark which would make them one of the youngest rotations in the league they're relying on these young guys the guys that are going to give them effort hustle and they're playing really inspired hoops because of that and it's getting back once again to that identity they had a couple of years ago. This brings us to the question of, is this sustainable or not? And to be honest, I don't really know if it is, at least not to this level. RJ Barrett and Julius Randle have just had too many inconsistencies for me to trust them at a really high level over a long period of time. If they do find some of that consistency, it goes a long way to them being really successful and maybe being a five seed or a four seed if they really push things in the Eastern Conference this season. But right now, I still see them as like a playoff team, maybe like a six, seven or an eight, which is much better than I thought they'd be coming into the year. So they have gained a lot of faith from me, but I do think I still want to see a little bit more before I truly buy into them fully. But there are some opportunities for them to get better over the course of the year. And a big one is through a star trade. We saw them strike out on Donovan Mitchell in the offseason. But there are a lot of names that are, feel like they're going to be available at the deadline. Names like Zach Levine, maybe even a Bradley Beal if the Wizards decide to blow things up. Kyle Kuzma, also there in Washington. Maybe Chris Upps Porzingis makes a homecoming. You've got DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine if the Bulls decide to blow things up. Even a Pascal Siakam or an OG Ananobi if Toronto decides that they want to go a different direction. So there are a lot of names on the market. So they're definitely are some names out there that they could look to acquire if they decide they want to add some more star power. With this, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. One of these names that I just talked about will be a New York Knick, whether it's in the offseason or by the trade deadline. I don't know which name. I know Zach Levine has been linked to them in rumors today as I'm recording this video, so maybe it's him. But regardless, I think the Knicks are going to look at the success that they've had now, say, hey, we've got Randall, we've got Brunson, we've got Barrett, we've got some solid young role players as well. Let's go ahead and add a fourth star 
star, whatever you want to say, to this organization to help us become a better team. Whether or not that's a good decision is another question. It depends on the player they acquire, but I do think it's a move that they'll look to make, and Knicks fans are just going to have to live with the consequences if it doesn't work out, or maybe it ends up succeeding and they end up somehow returning to title contention for the first time in a while. With all that being said, I appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos, and comment down below what you think about the New York Knicks. Do you think that they can truly get back to contention some point soon? Do you believe that they're a solid playoff team that this success that they're having is sustainable for the future and if they could acquire any star player that i mentioned which one would fit them the best appreciate y'all watching i'll see y'all later real one say it back